particular Ramit for inviting me to speak here. Um, so I'm going to uh, speak about, uh, I guess, data simulation, which uh, in some other field is called uh, nonlinear filtering or smoothing or, or path estimation, decoding, the other names for data simulation. And in particular, I'll talk about the duality between estimation and control, and in particular, a variational view of uh, Bayesian inference. Um, Okay, so the, the talk is in, it's what I just said before, data simulation is uh, path estimation or filtering or prediction. Um, and there are two parts. The, the first part, the nonlinear filtering and the innovation viewpoint and stochastic partial differential equation for the evolution of the conditional density. So that's um, known work. Uh, I'll, maybe quickly go through that. Uh, I have a survey paper on that, which I believe I've referenced somewhere, okay? And uh, the new part is, is this variational viewpoint, information theoretic interpretation and connections to stochastic control, okay? And I can do no better than uh, start with a um, quote uh, in a different context uh, by Claude Shannon, a paper he wrote in 1959 on rate distortion theory with a fidelity criterion, where he's talking about the uh, sort of a duality between source coding and channel coding. So the noisy channel coding theorem says that uh, there's a way to send messages reliably by first doing compression and then doing expansion in, in some sense, which is channel coding, and the corresponding side, channel decoding and, and uh, uh, source decoding. And this is an optimal way to uh, transmit messages reliable over noisy channel. And what uh, Shannon is saying is, is that, uh, in, in my terminology, that source coding is in some sense like control, and channel coding is in some sense like estimation. They interact in complicated ways, but asymptotically there's sort of a simplification. And he talks about the following uh, prescient way that um, I'll read the last part, which is relevant. This duality can be pursued further and is related to a duality between past and future and the notions of control and knowledge. Thus, we may have knowledge of the past but cannot control it. We may control the future but have no knowledge of it. Uh, now, another way of saying this is uh, it's, it's long been kind, kind of um, mentioned uh, somewhat informally in some sense, for example, that there's a duality between Kalman filtering and deterministic quadratic optimal control, okay? I mean, there's Kalman filtering could be, more, more precisely, the, the smoothing problem can be formulated as a variational problem somewhat informally, uh, and that, so that, um, sort of a minimum energy subject to, uh, uh, with, a, with a tracking constraint, this was uh, as, uh, alluded to in Didier's talk this morning when he was talking about the Leuenberger observer and a variational view of it. So, so that can be made uh, much more general and, and uh, uh, which is partly the subject of my talk, okay. All right, so the first part is, is, is an introduction to uh, nonlinear filtering. Uh, I'll go over that quickly. Uh, I'm afraid I have no contribution to make to anything practical in data simulation. This is uh, purely a theoretical contribution, but I believe that it provides a framework for looking at things like modeling errors and, and uh, both in probabilistic modeling errors and perhaps modeling errors in the, in the parameters, et cetera. And so I'll talk about it right at the end, uh, 
<coughs> and potentially that could be could be useful okay okay so firstly the this is standard so y is going to be the observation z is is what i call the signal and typically zs will be a function of some excess and excess will satisfy some stochastic differential equation plus brownian motion so this is a a more formal way of writing that the observations yt if you have to think of it as the increment of observations is signal zs plus white noise so white noise being sort of the formal derivative of Brownian motion. Okay, here I make the hypothesis that the signal and noise are independent, but that, that can be relaxed. Okay, and, and here it's scalar, but, but, but that, that can be relaxed too. Okay, now this viewpoint that I'm describing goes back to work of uh, Bode and Shannon. Uh, there's something called the innovations process. So the innovations process in some sense is, the, is that process which is sort of the new information contained in Y of T after you, you've extracted all probabilistic information from ZS up to time T minus one. So ZS, ZS hat is the conditional expectation of ZS given the past of Y, okay? And one, one, this is known that you can show this, this new T, right, adapted to the y, uh, the y process, function of Y, is actually standard Brownian motion. Okay, this is uh, sort of goes back to this Levy characterization of Brownian motion as a square integral martingale. Okay. Now, indeed, one can show that uh, the information contained in, in Y, namely the sigma field generated by y, y, is equal to the sigma field generated by the innovations. Uh, so this is true under the hypothesis that I'm describing uh, signal and noise independent. If the signal and noise were dependent, it's not known whether this result is true or not. Okay, so, and then essentially the idea is that what you would like to do is represent the conditional, conditional expectation, right? Yeah, so I, sh I should make one other, uh, one other comment. So right at the end, uh, or t towards the end, I'll talk about sort of analogies to statistical mechanics. So, so the basic idea is that states are probability measures on some con configuration processes, and observables are expectation values of functions with respect to these probability measures. And the viewpoint that we want to take is that for us, where there's going to be state processes and observation processes, states, the real states are conditional distributions and observables are, if you like, conditional statistics, right? Expectation values of, of functions integrated against conditional distributions. So the idea of, of the conditional distribution is the, all the probabilistic information that you can get that you can extract from the observations as far as the state is concerned. Okay, so that's, that's the analogy. And the, um, the first part of this talk is that, right, if you want to compute the conditional expectation of the state, say xd given, in this case, z, the signal given the past observation, then that has a representation as a square integral martingale. So that's the first part of the talk, and, and then you identify what that square integrable martingale and that gives rise to a filter. Okay, so that's what, now I specialize to the situation where the signal z of t is some nonlinear function of h of xt, and uh, so you need some hypotheses like the, the, the energy contained in H of XD should be finite, okay? And now explicitly, the, 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 the state XD evolves according to the solution of a stochastic differential equation, right? So that's really a, a, a more rigorous way of writing that dx by dt is, is equal to f of XD 
the g of x times white noise, right? So that's a more formal way of write, writing that. And suppose we want to estimate, write some functions uh, phi of x of t, maybe the, uh, the, the, the conditional mean or conditional variance, etc. then the, the idea is that you want to obtain a recursive equation for the evolution. So the notation pi of t is really, the, if you like, the duality between pi t is a measure and phi is, is a function, so it's the duality between measure and functions, right? Integral. So that's the, that's the notation. And this is a standard material. I'll uh, quickly uh, go through this. Uh, right, so uh, I mean the idea is that there are uh, different descriptions of the stochastic process, right? There's this description as a uh, as uh, evolution of a stochastic differential equation, but there's another uh, more uh, uh, maybe global description in terms of the solution of some partial differential equation. So if there's a density of x, then the, the evolution of that density satisfies some parabolic equation, right? The so-called Fokker-Planck equation. And so what I've written down here is the the diffusion operator, right, corresponding to the stochastic differential equation dxt equals f of x t g dbt. Okay. Okay. So um, after some. Uh, Manipulations involving stochastic differential equations and martingales, etc., uh, which I which I omit for the moment. What we come down to is uh, a differential equation for the evolution of right this. So pi, remember pi t of y, phi is the conditional expectation of phi given the past of the observations and that evolves according to some stochastic partial differential equation. L is the diffusion operator associated with the stochastic differential equation and nu is this innovations process and uh, so I mean, there's sort of a quadratic term here in some sense, uh, this pi of s h times pi of s pi. So, okay, so this is some, if you like, the, this part of it is the Fokker-Planck part, right? The autonomous part of the stochastic differential equation. And this is the direction that you're making, uh, right? because of you have observations and it's, it is giving you information about the state of the system. So there are these, these two terms. Okay, so that, I wrote that equation at the level of measures, right? So if there's a density, then the evolution of the density is again described some stochastic partial differential equation and uh, so there's a big literature on, on understanding when densities exist and so on um, and uh, a good uh, a good account of what I've just described is is in this uh, article by Etienne Pardou on fil uh, nonlinear filters and the corresponding partial differential equations. Okay. And sort of this equation was first derived by Harold Kushner, so historically. Okay, so, so this part is the Fokker Planck equation, and this is the, the correction coming out of the fact that you're making observations and that's giving you information about the state of the system. 
Okay, now this is a kind of an important comment. The difficulty is that if you want to compute the conditional statistic, right, like the conditional mean, you can write down an equation for the evolution of the conditional mean. However, the conditional mean depends on the next statistic, namely sort of the conditional variance and so on. So there isn't, so there's this so-called moment closure problem. And I mean, nonlinear filters are almost always infinite dimensional. Okay. The, those problems for which there are finite dimensional filters would form some kind of a very thin set in the, you know, the space of filtering problems. So Kalman filtering is one where you would have a finite dimensional filter, or um, if you have a finite state Markov chain, then you have a finite dimensional filter. Uh, I'll give you one other example. But by and large, uh, there are very few problems where you will have a, a finite dimensional filter. When I say finite dimensional filter, I mean that the, these moments truncate exactly, say, after a few moments. Okay. So pi t of s is integral of f pi d pi t. Pi t is the conditional measure. Here? Here? This? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, so. Yes, so p tilde dx, p tilde of tx dx is like d pi t, right? I mean, pi t of x is integral of x d pi t, and d pi t is like p tilde tx dx, right? That's the density. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and, uh, which? No, why? Oh, right, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is with the comment that I made. There are very few finite dimensional filters. Uh, so one, of, one case where there are finite dimension filters when the evolution of the, so you have some continuous time finite state markup chain. Okay. Now, uh, there's another equation which is related to um, the, the, the nonlinear evolution equation for the conditional dis distribution is, that it can be shown that you can write pi t of phi as some unnormalized object, rho t of phi times rho t of one, and you can describe the evolution of rho t of phi, which turns out to be a linear stochastic partial differential equation. So this was first derived in the theses of Duncan and Mortensen and so on, and, and there's the paper of Zakai. So the unnormalized uh, conditional uh, under unnormalized conditional density equation. Okay. And the, the interesting thing is that that unnormalized conditional density equation, you can write down a path integral formula for that, which is analogous to the Feynman Katz formula. And indeed, there are sort of close connections between the, uh, I would say, the mathematics related to the sort of the probabilistic view of quantum mechanics and nonlinear filtering. And this is discussed in a paper I wrote quite some time back. But the important point is that you can write down a path integral formula, and from the path integral formula, you can uh, get to things like particle filtering and, and so on. So.
Yeah, so I'm more or less deriving the particle, uh, uh, the Feynman Katz formula, so I'll go over that. Uh, now, it turns out that um, this equation that I have written here is an equation for the evolution of the condition of density, but written in so-called Stratonovich form. So there's, uh, right, so far what I was describing was stochastic calculus, which, um, right, which is tied to the definition of, an, of a stochastic integral, namely some random thing against some Brownian motion, but there's another calculus, this is, this is Stratnovich, which is more symmetric. And for, if you want to think about these equations geometrically, then one should work with the Stratnovich form. And this minus half of h squared term is the so-called uh, wang zakai uh, correction. And uh, I want to make this uh, comment here that, um, well, it turns out that uh, some, somehow the complexity of the filter is measured by the Lie algebra generated by L star minus one half h squared and h. So remember h is the observation operator and if you look at the sort of the Lie algebra generated by L star minus one half h squared and h, I mean that measures the complexity of the filter. And this Lie algebra will almost always be infinite dimensional. So there's little hope of sort of reducing it to quadratures in some sense, okay? I mean, there is, uh, there, there are uh, very few examples where this Lie algebra turns out to be, of nonlinear filters, where the Lie algebra turns out to be finite dimensional. And uh, for that, you can, uh, you can construct a finite dimensional filter. Uh, the interesting point is that for the Kalman filter problem, right, where, where L star would be the some constant coefficient elliptic operator and H is some, some linear function, this Lie algebra turns out to be the, the so-called oscillator algebra in, in quantum mechanics. Uh, and in some sense, uh, integrating the um, so the integrating the filter, right, integrating the differential equation is in some ways corresponds to kind of a representation of that Lie algebra, okay. All right, so this is all known material. And this is, I mean, there are examples of filters where you can prove that no finite dimensional filter exists. In any case, this, this uh, moment closure issue is uh, certainly a difficult issue. As far as I know, there aren't any general theories there, but uh, there are a variety of different schemes to sort of enforce moment closure in some sense and thereby construct filters. Okay, so now I want to talk about this variational interpretation of Bayesian inference, in firstly in a very general context, and then I'll specialize to this uh, estimation, this filtering problem, where uh, the thing that you wish to estimate satisfies some stochastic differential equation, and you have some nonlinear function of the of the state plus uh, plus no plus noise as observations, and you want to construct the conditional probability. And what I'll end up showing that that constructing that conditional probability corresponds to solving a stochastic control problem in a very precise sense. And uh, sort of the linear case and so on are very special cases of that, okay. All right, so what this part shows is that you want to estimate x from some related, some related random variable y, okay. And what you're given as data are the joint distribution of p of x, y, and the marginals p of x and p, y. 
and we make the assumption that this joint distribution has a density with respect to px, the marginal, the prior distribution, times some reference measure on the y, right? x is what you want to estimate, and y is what you observe, right? And the, the base prescription is that you want to compute the conditional distribution of x given by. Okay, here I'm thinking of the random variables x and y in, in a very general context. So, for example, x could be a, a, a random variable taking values in the space of continuous functions, namely a whole trajectory of some stochastic process. Okay, and similarly y. So, uh, you know, they take values perhaps in some separable metric space or something like that. Okay, so what H, so Q of X, Y is really the likelihood function. So that's the Radon Nicodem, or more formally, the Radon Nicodem derivative of the joint distribution of X, Y, which is with respect to PX product lambda Y, but take lambda Y to be PY itself. So H of X, Y is minus log of the likelihood function. And you can, rewrite, you can write the Bayes formula, namely the conditional distribution of x given y corresponding to the event A, given the observation y equal to y, as integral of exponential of minus h of x, y, integrated against the prior distribution, normalized. Right? I've written it in this way. I've used the notation H is, is to think of H somehow as an Hamiltonian or some energy. If you had a simple estimation problem like Y equals H of X plus some noise, Y, then Q, this minus log of Q of X, Y will precisely be, say, integral of H of X minus Y squared. So this is like a re rewriting the Bayes formula, well, actually it's sort of like a Gibbs measure, okay? So where I'm getting to is that just as in, a, in statistical mechanics, the uh, a, a thermodynamic system is in equilibrium is described by some Gibbs distribution, and there's a corresponding variational principle for the Gibbs distribution, namely that you minimize the free energy. So what I'm about to show is that the, what the base formula corresponds to exactly minimization of a free energy. Okay, and that has an information theoretic, a precise information theoretic interpretation. Okay, so I, I, I won't have time to talk about this. I mean, the question that we want to understand is that the information initially is contained in the initial state, or more precisely, the distribution of the initial state, and the information contained in observation, that's, and that is accumulated as time passes. So that information gets transferred to the filter, right, over time. That's what this recursive conditional density equation tells you, okay? And we want to understand what is the nature of that information transfer. Is that conservative in the sense of lossless, or is it dissipative, or whatever? And um, so, okay, so we, we come to that. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm saying is that the previous, you know, rewriting the Bayes formula as exponential of minus h of x y integrated against px is, um, right, I mean, that yields the posterior probability distribution for x for each outcome y. Okay, so now uh, what I'm about to describe are, are right, so. W our goal is to show that this conditional distribution P of X, Y, right, that satisfies a certain variational principle, that it minimizes a certain information like functional, okay? And for that, I need two things. I need the idea of, of a relative entropy between two probability measures say on X, 
right? Cool box Libre information or, or, or other names for it. So that is the integral of log of the, right? This is the Radon Nicotine derivative, sort of, if you like, ratio of densities. Okay? So that's what the relative entropy of two probability measures are. And another quantity, right, H is like H, right, H of X, Y are, are these, right, I defined as the minus log of the likelihood function. That's like an energy function. So this quantity, this is like a logarithmic moment generating function corresponding to the function H tilde. And the notation is H tilde PX tilde is integral of H tilde DPX tilde. So, I mean, my notation pi T phi was integral of phi D pi T. Okay? So this is the average energy, right? So if you remember your thermodynamics, what the free energy is, it's the average energy minus the entropy. Right, at least for finite systems. And Gibbs measures minimizes free energy, right? So this corresponds to average energy, and the relative entropy corresponds to the sort of the entropy term. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. Maybe five minutes? Ten minutes? Ten minutes? Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, goes into this interpretation. It is well known that the relative entropy can be interpreted as the information gain of the probability measure Px tilde over, over, over Px, uh, uh, yeah, Px whatever hat. In fact, any version of minus log of that is a generalization of the Shannon information for x. For almost all x, it is a measure of the relative degree of surprise in the outcome x equals x for the two distribution px tilde and px tilde. Thus h of px tilde is the average reduction in the degree of surprise in this outcome arising from the acceptance of px tilde as the distribution for x rather than px tilde. Okay, so the information gain of px tilde over px uh, hat. So if you interpret exponential of minus h tilde, remember h was minus log of the likelihood function q of x, y, right? So exponential of minus h tilde is, li is the likelihood function corresponding to some unspecified observation. Okay. Then H tilde of X is the residual degree of surprise in that observation if you already know that X equals X. And I H tilde is the total degree of surprise in that observation. Okay? So we'll call H tilde of X as the X conditional inf information in the unspecified observation. And I have H tilde the information in that observation. I mean, these are uh, quite precise. And the theorem is the following, that what the Bayes formula does, right, it, it optimally balances the information contained in the, the prior distribution, Px, and the residual information that's contained in the I mean, the way of giving the observation is really giving the likelihood function. That's a very general way of giving the likelihood. And what this shows is that that minimization of Px over Px tilde, this has a unique minimizer, which is precisely the conditional distribution. And, uh, and you can compute the distance of the prior P of x to the conditional distribution in this relative entropy distance sense. And that has a variational interpretation itself. So these are dual variational problems. In fact, these are Legendre-Fenchel duals of each other. And uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what, what this actually does for you. So I don't think I'll have time to show you, go through that. What I'm going to show is that this variational problem, when we look at when x corresponds to the a stochastic process, a path in, in some stochastic process, and y corresponds to some nonlinear observation, etc., a whole observation path, then this abstract variational problem can be given a stochastic uh, control interpretation. Okay. Yeah, so this is the uh, sort of the conceptualization of what that variational formula says, which balances optimally the information contained in the prior and the residual information in the, in the likelihood. So let me uh, skip through uh, a little bit. By the way, this uh, generalizes in many ways the ideas of maximum entropy and so on, which I don't really have time to get into. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, note the change in, uh, change in uh, notation. So now I specialize to the case where the S demand xt satisfies the stochastic differential equation, and y of t uh, is, is the observation, which is some nonlinear function of the state plus, plus noise. By the way, I mean, with more machinery, we could replace this by some kind of stochastic partial differential equation in principle. OK, so. I mean, I mean, this is, I would say, is, is, is the main contribution, right? So, s suppose you're interested in the path estimation problem. Namely, you want to estimate the whole path x from 0 to t, given observations y from 0 to t, right? The filtering problem would be estimating x at time t, given observations y from 0 to t. Now, the path estimation problem has, can be solved in the following way, that you run a backward likelihood filter starting at the end time to estimate the initial distribution of the state. Okay? Now, in the process, some information gets dissipated. It turns out that, so this is an optimal filter the amount of information that gets dissipated is governed by the so-called Fisher information. Uh, I refer you to this paper for the, in the linear situation, but the theory is more general. Now, the dissipated information is recovered by running a forward optimal stochastic problem. And the resulting optimal path space measure is the conditional path estimator. So this is a vast generalization of the forward-backward algorithm, which tells you how to solve the path estimation problem theoretically by running a backward filter and a forward stochastic control problem. I want to write down what that, show you what that stochastic control problem is. Um, Yes, so, so this is the stochastic control problem that you need to solve. So there is a, an energy term, a scaled energy term. Okay? So think of sigma transpose equal to the identity, then this is just going to be u squared. So that's like an energy term. And this is a tracking term, right? So this is the in some sense, the error between the actual observations, forget the yt dot. And g of x tilde is, is if there were no noise, I mean, that's what you would get as the observation. So this is like a tracking term. Uh, I, mean, I mean, there's this term because of differentiation issues. And the stochastic control problem solves this. 
in some sense, quadratic control problem subject to a nonlinear stochastic differential equation. So this can be specialized to the uh, carbon filter problem, which gives a, a rigorous justification of, of uh, earlier work that was done on this. And uh, actually, this stochastic control problem is related to my earlier work on, on relating hamilton jacobi bellman equations and, and parabolic equations to the Hopf the Hopf-Slack transformation. Uh, and uh, it's in this precise sense that there is a duality between estimation and control. Okay, so. What? Through this, that there's a stochastic control problem which is in a precise sense sort of dual to the estimation problem. So I'll stop here. By the way, the, the slides are here, and Amit has the slides, so, yeah. And um, the, there are two references which, surprisingly, I forgot to uh, put in the paper. Uh, maybe I'll indicate that to Amit. Yeah. Thanks very okay. much. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, uh, yeah. That extensions to process described by partial differential equation, infinite time behavior of the filter. It turns out there's recent work on nonlinear observability, uh, sort of an, in a stochastic context, which tells us how to relate. We know that observability plays an important role in understanding the stability properties of the Kalman filter. Um, now, I, I, I think this would be a very good thesis uh, to do filtering extension of recent work of Andrew Maida. Uh, he doesn't, as far as I can see, um, uh, introduce observations at all into the picture. He sort of computes relative entropies of uh, et cetera. And there's also recent work of Shorin on implicit sampling for particle filtering. Uh, so lots to be done. Yeah, sorry. In Lie algebra, generated Lie algebra and the dimension of the filter. Oh, Lie algebra. Lie algebra. Yeah. So, can you elaborate on that? How are they connected? The dimension is the only thing that connects, or can you say more? Okay, so, so the idea is the following, that if there were a finite dimensional filter, then you would have a stochastic... So, suppose you wanted to compute the conditional mean, right? Then a finite dimensional filter would say that dx t hat equal say f of x t hat dt plus some g of x dwt or something like that. And this equation is evolving in, in some finite dimensional manifold, right? For this to happen, there has to be a homomorphism of Lie algebras from the original partial differential equation to the Lie algebra vector fields on some finite dimensional manifold. And you can show, this was done by Hector Sussman, who showed that for certain problems, no such. It turns out there, there are problems where this Lie algebra is the so-called Weyl algebra, the Lie algebra of partial differential operators of you know, polynomial coefficients and so on. And what Sussman showed was, it was conjectured by me, that there's no Lie algebra homomorphism between the original filter Lie algebra to a Lie algebra of vector fields on a finite dimensional manifold, and hence no finite dimensional filter could exist. But on the other hand, for things like Kalman filters, the algebra is an oscillator algebra, and the filter is in some sense a representation in some vague sense of that Lie algebra, right? It's not a unitary representation, but it's some, maybe some L1 representation or something like that. And as I believe that it's not known what kind of infinite dimensional Lie algebras can be generated by Lie algebras of vector fields on finite dimensional manifolds. So, this Lie algebra. You know, there would be finite dimensional filters and this would, you know, this would sort of 
enrich the field in some way that this moment closure problem would be solved in a very satisfactory way. But I, I think the, the chances of that are, are almost zero. I mean, the exact question arises in, in physics, namely, what Feynman cuts formulae can you uh, reduce to quadratures? And the answer is not many. <laughs>